Yellowstone National Park officials just revealed that they are monitoring Yellowstone National Park after seismographs reported a series of earthquakes. Over 60 earthquakes were detected within just 12 hours, with the University of Utah reporting that the earthquakes hit a region beneath the northern portion of Yellowstone Lake. Yellowstone Lake is the largest body of water in Yellowstone National Park, located in Wyoming, USA. The lake covers an area of 136 square miles, has an average depth of 140 feet, and is surrounded by mountains and forests. The lake is fed by the Yellowstone River and several streams, and is the source of the Yellowstone River, which flows for hundreds of miles through the western United States. Yellowstone Lake is known for its scenic beauty and recreational opportunities, including fishing, boating, and hiking. The lake is also an important part of the park's ecosystem, supporting a wide variety of plant and animal species. There is magma underneath Yellowstone Lake in Yellowstone National Park. The magma chamber that powers the Yellowstone supervolcano extends from about 5 to 10 kilometers beneath the surface and is estimated to be about 80 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide. The heat and pressure from this magma chamber are responsible for the geothermal activity in the park, including the geysers, hot springs, and mud pots. According to the University of Utah, who were keeping a close eye on the seismic activity, they reported that the earthquakes hit the southeast region of the lake and started on the 28th of March. The researchers said that two of the last earthquakes that were detected were higher than magnitude 3. A magnitude 3 earthquake is considered a minor earthquake and typically causes little damage, especially if it occurs in a sparsely populated area. However, the intensity and damage caused by an earthquake of this magnitude depend on several factors, such as the depth of the earthquake, the distance from the epicenter to the populated area, and the construction of buildings and infrastructure in the affected area. In general, a magnitude 3 earthquake can cause shaking that is felt by people, but it is not usually strong enough to cause significant damage. However, if the earthquake occurs in an area with older or poorly constructed buildings, there is a higher risk of damage such as cracking of walls or chimneys. Earthquakes can potentially cause significant damage to Yellowstone National Park, particularly if they trigger an eruption of the supervolcano. Even smaller earthquakes could have an impact on the geothermal features of the park, such as geysers and hot springs, causing changes in their behavior or even damage. The ground shaking from an earthquake can also cause landslides, rockfalls, and other types of ground failure, which could impact roads and infrastructure within the park. Additionally, an earthquake-induced landslide or rockfall could potentially dam a river, causing flooding and further damage downstream. The effects of an earthquake on Yellowstone National Park would depend on the magnitude, depth and location of the earthquake, as well as the current state of the supervolcano and other geological features. According to the University of Utah, a minimum of 60 earthquakes were recorded, with them saying that they are currently still reviewing the data. Earthquake sequences are relatively common in Yellowstone National Park due to its location atop the Yellowstone caldera, which is an active volcanic system. The Yellowstone caldera experiences thousands of small earthquakes each year, most of which are not felt by people. However, in recent years, those living close to the region have allegedly reported that they've felt tremors and went on to say that there have been several notable earthquake sequences in the park's recent history. If Yellowstone's supervolcano were to erupt, it would be a catastrophic event with global consequences. The immediate impact would be felt in the surrounding area, where the blast would cause massive destruction, taking out tens of thousands of people and wiping out entire cities. The eruption would produce a massive ash cloud that would be propelled into the upper atmosphere, reaching heights of up to 30 kilometers or 18 miles. This ash cloud would spread across the continent, affecting air travel and causing health problems for people with respiratory issues. In addition to the ash cloud, the eruption would release large amounts of sulfur dioxide gas into the atmosphere. This gas would react with water vapor to form sulfuric acid, which would fall back to the surface as acid rain. This acid rain would have devastating effects on crops, forests and water supplies, killing plants and animals, and contaminating water sources. The eruption would also cause a temporary global cooling effect, as the ash cloud would block out the sun's rays and reduce the amount of solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface. 
This cooling effect could last for years, causing crop failures and famine in many parts of the world. An eruption of Yellowstone's supervolcano would be a catastrophic event that would have severe and long-lasting consequences for the planet and its inhabitants. The first sign of an impending eruption would likely be an increase in the number and intensity of earthquakes in the area. This would be followed by ground deformation as magma moves beneath the surface, causing the ground to bulge and crack. The ground would also become very hot due to the heat from the magma, and there would be an increase in the temperature of the hot springs and geysers in the park. As the pressure builds, there would be a sudden and violent explosion as the magma erupts from the surface. This would create a massive ash cloud that could rise several miles into the atmosphere and would likely be visible from miles away. The ash cloud would be carried by the prevailing winds, spreading ash and volcanic debris over a wide area. The initial eruption would be followed by a series of smaller eruptions over the course of several weeks or months as the volcano continues to release ash and gas. These eruptions could trigger other natural disasters, such as landslides, mud flows and wildfires. The long-term effects of the eruption would be even more far-reaching, with the ash and debris settling over a wide area and affecting the air, water and soil quality. The destruction of the ecosystem would have an impact on the food chain, with many species of plants and animals being wiped out. Currently, there is no known way to stop the eruption of a supervolcano like the one at Yellowstone National Park. The sheer magnitude of such an eruption would dwarf any efforts to prevent it, and would likely require resources and technologies beyond what is currently available. It's true that the supervolcano is capable of causing significant damage and disruption, and scientists have said that as of right now, all we can do is monitor the park for any changes. Scientists continue to study the Yellowstone supervolcano and other potentially hazardous geological features in order to better understand them and develop strategies for mitigating their impact in the event of an eruption. Yellowstone's supervolcano is particularly dangerous due to the amount of ash that would be released. Volcanic ash is a mixture of tiny rock particles, mineral fragments, and volcanic glass that are created during explosive volcanic eruptions. These particles can range in size from less than 2 microns to several millimeters in diameter, with the finer ash particles being the most dangerous. When a volcano erupts, it releases a cloud of ash into the atmosphere which can travel long distances depending on the size and intensity of the eruption. The ash cloud can disrupt air travel, as the particles can cause damage to airplane engines and pose a hazard to passengers. In addition to its effects on air travel, volcanic ash can also cause serious health problems for humans and animals. The inhalation of fine ash particles can lead to respiratory problems, including coughing, wheezing and shortness of breath. Long-term exposure to volcanic ash can also increase the risk of lung cancer and other respiratory diseases. Volcanic ash can also have significant impacts on agriculture and infrastructure. When ash falls to the ground, it can bury crops and contaminate water supplies, which can have a devastating effect on local communities. Ash can also damage buildings and other structures, causing them to collapse or fail. It is highly likely that Yellowstone's supervolcano would release pyroclastic flows if it were to erupt. Pyroclastic flows are a mixture of hot gas, ash, and volcanic rock fragments that can travel at high speeds, typically down the slope of a volcano. They can be incredibly destructive, with temperatures reaching over 1,000 degrees Celsius and speeds of up to 700 kilometers per hour. In the case of a supervolcano eruption at Yellowstone, the pyroclastic flows would be much larger and more powerful than those from a typical volcano, covering much larger areas and traveling much farther. These flows could potentially cover a significant portion of the surrounding area, causing massive destruction and loss of life. In addition to pyroclastic flows, the eruption of Yellowstone's supervolcano would also release large amounts of volcanic ash, which can cause respiratory problems and eye irritation, and can also disrupt transportation and other infrastructure. The ash can also cause significant damage to crops and other agricultural resources, leading to food shortages and economic disruption. The biggest volcanic eruption in recorded history occurred in 1815 on the island of Sumbawa in present-day Indonesia. The volcano, known as Mount Tambora, had been dormant for several hundred years before it erupted in a massive explosion 
that lasted for several days. The eruption was so powerful that it is estimated to have released more than 50 cubic kilometers of magma, making it the largest eruption in at least the past 2,000 years. The explosion was heard more than 2,000 kilometers away, and the ash cloud it generated was so large that it circled the globe, causing a year without a summer in many parts of the world in 1816. The eruption of Mount Tambora was not only the largest in recorded history, but it was also one of the deadliest. An estimated 71,000 people passed away as a result of the eruption and its aftermath, including many who passed away from starvation and disease in the years that followed due to the crop failures caused by the ash and dust that blocked out the sun. The eruption of Mount Tambora had a significant impact on global climate, causing temperatures to drop by as much as 3 degrees Celsius in some regions. The ash and debris ejected into the atmosphere also had a cooling effect on the planet, which was felt for several years after the eruption. The length of time it would take for the world to return to normal after a massive volcano eruption would depend on various factors such as the size of the eruption, the location of the volcano and the magnitude of the impact on the environment. In the case of a supervolcano eruption like the one that could occur at Yellowstone National Park, the effects could be felt globally. The immediate effects of the eruption would include massive amounts of ash and dust being spewed into the atmosphere, which could cause a volcanic winter with temperatures dropping and sunlight being blocked out. This could have a significant impact on agriculture, leading to widespread crop failures and famine. The ash and dust could also cause respiratory problems for humans and animals, as well as damage to buildings, infrastructure and transportation systems. The long-term effects of the eruption would depend on how quickly the atmosphere clears up and how long it takes for the environment to recover. The volcanic ash and dust would eventually settle, but could take months or even years to do so. The ash could have a fertilizing effect on the soil, but could also cause problems for waterways and aquatic ecosystems. It is difficult to predict how long it would take for the world to return to normal after a massive volcano eruption, but over time, ecosystems can recover and the environment can return to a more stable state. So, what do you make of these recent earthquakes at Yellowstone National Park, and when do you think the supervolcano under Yellowstone will erupt? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.